Hi, it's Anthony with Lighthouse Construction, and we are back at the new home on Pelican Lake where we're taking you Beyond the Blueprint. It is a beautiful day on the shore here at Pelican Lake in Detroit Lakes. You can see here we have now framed the second story of the home since the last time we were out here. We've set all the Marvin windows. We have a nice fiberglass Marvin Essential window package on this home here. We're actually gonna frame the porch roof and believe it or not, just yesterday, we actually poured the concrete footings for this home. So it's gonna be a really nice uh, look and there's gonna be a gabled porch coming off here and then a shed roof that continues off of that side. But again, something you'll notice on a lot of the homes we build is a, just a ton of glass on the lakeside because in the summertime when the wind's blowing here, you might not feel it now, but it's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Let's take a look inside. As I come inside here, you can see this nice eight foot entry door. This is just a temporary door, but there's a nice covered porch out there. As you walk in the home, there's this nice entry closet here. So guests will have a spot to take off their ja jacket, hang in the closet here. There's gonna be a beautiful open staircase here. So this is actually gonna have a nice uh, iron balusters that come with a wood rail. And then as I walk in the home, I'm greeted with those fantastic lake views. Right here, we have the master suite. And we'd actually, this is just temporarily set up for some wind protection, so this is not a part of the construction here. You can see we have a nice windows glass. The headboard is gonna be on this side. Uh, there's a uh, closet back on that side, and this actually will walk through to the master suite, so I'll show you that on the other side. We'll kind of cut through the walls, play a little bit of ghost here. As I walk in here, you can just see, again, beautiful views of the lake here. We have this tall ceiling, so it's nine foot ceilings on the main level, nine foot upstairs, so 18 uh, feet plus a two foot truss, so 20 foot to the top of the ceiling and then the vault, so it's probably 25 feet up there. Uh, just great views, eight foot sliders to really give it that nice uh, feel of some opulence in this space. Uh, kind of something we did for the client here was we actually cut out the TV, the mantle, and the fireplace box, and we moved them around to make sure we just nailed the location of all of those items in this space. Uh, moving through here, you can see uh, this is that steel beam condition. Now that the second floor is stores framed, we use no posts needed here. Uh, this kitchen is gonna have a nice, uh, kind of a dining room area in here a big island and then an L-shaped kitchen behind that island to kind of create a nice open living concept in this space. So let's cut around to the sunroom here. So just off of the living room, there's gonna be a nice glass door into the sunroom. And this kind of is just really a, a second living room space. Um, you know, you could maybe put someone on a sofa bed sleeper in here, uh, but again, taking in the views of the lake, uh, nice glass here, there's gonna be a TV in this space. Um, so really, really focusing on family. You know, we want to create a home that can host a lot of people. And a part of that's having different living room spaces so different age groups, demographics can be in their own space. Right here we have a nice pantry that's underneath the staircase. Uh, this wall has been framed out. This is the powder room for the home. So a nice dedicated bathroom for all the guests. Uh, no one's going to use that for brushing their teeth or anything. So it's strictly for using the restroom. And then as I walk through here towards the garage, I have this nice um, kind of an entry laundry mud room. Uh, so we have our washer and dryer, our mechanical room tucked back in there, and then a little area to access uh, some storage underneath the staircase here. And as I open it here, you can obviously guess where I'm in. We're in the garage here. Uh, just a ton of natural light coming in uh, from the garage top lights uh, into this space. Let's take a look upstairs. So as we come up the stairs here, I'm gonna be greeted by this nice knee wall here. And then this is going to be a nice open railing so you get fantastic views. If you look out there, you actually see the wind. I think the lake's gonna freeze pretty soon here, but currently it's still in its liquid form. Uh, and there's really some nice bedroom space up here. So right here, we're waiting to set this one window in place here, so that opening is right there. Uh, and then we have, this is actually kind of a private master suite, honestly. This has its own bathroom dedicated, a nice tub, uh, vanity space, toilet, and then in here, fantastic views of the lake for the bedroom side, and a nice little closet. So we actually have done, uh, versus like a walk-in closet, in order to add some more space for the bedroom, we've done two separate closets with different French doors on them, but it will all be connected from the inside of that space. Uh, let's take a look at the other bedroom on this side of the home. It's very similar configured to that room. Uh, we walk in here, there's plenty of room. It kind of was orientated so you could put your headboard on this side looking this way. You could put a headboard over here, kind of maybe do a combination of a king size bed and some bunks for a growing family. Have those double closets here in this space as well. This bedroom shares the hall bathroom up here. So as you walk in this space, you'll see where the vanity is located, the toilet stool, 
And then a little uh, linen closet is going to be in there. And then as we walk down here, this we have as a uh, office space. So it's a little bit smaller. You could potentially uh, stick a bed in this room, but primarily it is for an office space. And then in here, we have the space above the garage. So this is just a fantastic bonus room space. So this is kind of that almost second or third living room space in this home. We've done a vaulted uh, truss in here, a scissors truss. It's a nice uh, cost effective, a little more affordable than a true parallel cord, uh, but gives that room a lot of height. So a nine foot ceiling plus this vaulted uh, space in here really gives it a lot of uh, feel. We're just starting the rough-in phase here, so now that the majority of our windows are in and we're weather tight, we're gonna start doing all of the HVAC work, the electrical work, and the plumbing work. So we're gonna check back at this job site in a few weeks and kind of see where we're at. It's been several weeks since we've been on the job site here, and you can see they're currently stocking the upper level driveway. It's kind of cool. They have these trucks with kind of a built-in lift crane type situation where they can actually take that take out a window and enter directly versus trying to go through the staircase. It really saves on time and any sort of damage to some of the framing materials. But let's go take a look inside and see some of the progress that they've been doing. So in the garage space here, you look up, you can see there's reinforced poly. So they're actually gonna blow this ceiling with insulation since the garage may not be heated as warm as the rest of the house. The walls have an R21 bat insulation and they've installed a vapor barrier to help with some of the air tightness of the home. This is technically an exterior wall, so we put Tyvek on it. Um, as you enter into the mudroom here, you're gonna see the insulation process is in full swing. They've spray foamed the rim joist, so that's the area between the web trusses of the two levels. So that it now has spray foam, there's wall insulation. As we walk in here, some of the things that need to get done during this rough-in phase, you can see the fireplace has actually been set. And the reason they've set the fireplace is because the drywall actually will get installed, as you can see, around it, because it's kind of a modern uh, trimless look. So that will help us achieve that. And really, they're just kind of working through this space to insulate all of it. If you check this out, this is actually a bump out on the home so they've spray foamed this because this is considered a hot roof where the spray foam is attached directly to the roof deck and then as you pivot over here you're going to notice this all is in the process of insulation let's take a look upstairs at where they're stocking from that drywall so we're now standing upstairs in the home here and if you look you can see they've started to stock the drywall and they'll actually place that in each room so it makes the hanging process a little more efficient if we take a look over here, we can see that's where they're bringing it in, that window uh, from the outside at the beginning, or middle of the video, I should say, rather. This ceiling actually has been hung with the poly. So what they're gonna do is hang the drywall and then we'll go back from the attic space and actually blow in this insulation. Where downstairs, we had to use the reinforced poly because there's actually no way to blow in that insulation. But we let the drywall kind of act as our support for that poly vapor barrier. Let's go check out the back lake side of the home and some of the exterior porch framing that we've done. So as you can see, we have started framing this lakeside porch and this is framed using true eight by eight cedar rough sawn timbers. So it's gonna take that stain really nicely. You can see the sunburst there and how that's framed to kind of create that rustic Minnesota look. It's just really nice to see that wood kind of come together and create that traditional gable structure look. And underneath there, there's gonna be aluminum soffit and uh, still that steel fascia to kind of create the nice element. And when we design these homes, we think through both the aesthetics and also some of the long-term maintenance, those types of things. So in this case, you know, staining these cedar columns is a relatively minimal task. The rest of the home is all maintenance-free products such as hardy board, uh, aluminum and steel. But this just creates that warmth and sometimes you just really can't quite emulate that using anything but a natural product. So in this case, it just creates a really fun look and I'm excited to see this once this under concrete patio is done. And you can see here, there's just a ton of covered space. So as I come out from the kitchen, there's gonna be a ceiling fan. So I imagine there'll be like a nice dining room space here. This opens up from the living room with the vault to kind of create those nice tall ceilings. You know, I can see some, maybe a couch shaped furniture over here and then over on the sunroom side, we've opened it up so that you can still have that nice view of the stars. I'm thinking a gas fireplace here, really thinking through that indoor outdoor living because with those big three patio doors, we wanted to make sure that we capture the essence of lake living, which I think we've really achieved here. And I'm excited to see uh, this project continue down the road.
We are back on this beautiful job site here. The drywall has now been hung on the wall. So last time they were stocking the drywall, now it's all hung. So if you kind of spin around, drywall does kind of a deceiving thing when it gets hung on a job site. We get a lot of feedback from customers of sometimes before the drywall is there, they say, oh, it doesn't feel quite as big, but sometimes actually closing the space can make it feel larger because I don't know what's necessarily behind that wall and it gives it you know, more of a sense of a finished home. So sometimes closing it in can actually make it feel bigger. So. Let's just do a quick spin around here. The kitchen now is here. Again, this is that area where we're gonna, we would have required a, a large column, but we were able to use the steel. So now you can really see how nice this is all open here. And it transitions from that nine foot ceiling up to this beautiful vaulted two story, clear story. You can see the catwalk there has that 24 inch floor truss to transfer mechanicals across the home. And then here's just this nice two story space. We have the fireplace framed out nicely. Just want to highlight on a couple of things. So during this process of drywall and mudding, if you look outside, you're going to notice some white stuff on the ground. That's snow and it's incredibly cold out. But in order to mud and drywall, you need your home to be warm. Where a lot of times you can use these uh, heaters, but in this case, we have floor heat in the home. So we're actually able to heat a majority of the home with the floor seat heat. So I have the slab cranked up here. It's nice and warm. And what's cool about that is it doesn't have any duct work, so I'm not transferring any air movement or dust where you typically wouldn't want to turn on your HVAC system in a home before the home's completed because then you'd be moving dust and you're returning supply air. But in this case with floor heat, you're able to actually heat the home pretty energy efficiently in the winter time during this. So one nice little benefit there of using floor heat during construction. So if you look here, we have the nice zero entry into the garage. Uh, we're gonna do kind of a, a, a hybrid fire tape plus in that garage space. If you peek over here to the mechanic room, here's where you get to see that boiler that is installed and actually heating the floors in the home. And then I wanna show you something upstairs as well. So drywall is pretty much the wall surface on every uh, area inside this home here. Um, but it really helps to open up this vaulted area as well. So we're gonna have a nice ridge beam running down this vaulted area. That fireplace is gonna be a nice smooth drywall for kind of that modern European look. And then let's look at this bonus room because this is an area that it used to feel like it had the nice tall ceilings, but now with the drywall in here, this room just has a really grand feel to it. And we were able to do a scissors truss, which means this vault is half of the pitch of the outside. So if the outside's a 612, this would be about a 312 on the inside, but it still creates a really nice uh, voluptuous room, so to say, with a lot of space for entertaining. I've heard rumor maybe a golf simulator or something like that could go in this space down the road. So. Thanks so much for joining us on today's episode where we're taking you beyond the blueprint.